You're not crazy. You're wild. There's a difference. You are the wild child. You are the person that has absolutely made your family's life, your life, existence in general, much more exciting, penetrating, <laughs> beautiful. You make people go past this limit. You literally state this life is going to have more creation. My existence will, does, and forever continues to raise the vibration of this world. I embrace my past. I embrace my moments of when I would lead myself through fear. I embrace all of those feelings because now I have complete control of myself. And I understand I've never been crazy. I didn't, I wasn't taught how to contain, but also embrace my wild child existence. The words crazy, too emotional, overbearing, exaggerative, etc., are things that you no longer will ever allow yourself to think or insinuate to your own existence. You know in your abilities. You know every spot the monsters try to hide in your mind, in your existence, the corners, the faces, the smirks, you know what all of it looks like. They can't hide from you. The monster is afraid of you, you see? I see there's been little by little a wiggle room a person's been making for you. Okay, what does that mean? Wiggle room for a little bit. Okay, so you embraced... You embrace this fact that you're not crazy about a connection. No, you didn't make it up in your head how you two felt about each other. You did read many signs correctly. For you, for you, for you and this person to be together, there had to be a death of something in both of your lives. What it sense, what they're telling me to sense is when it comes to you, you had to learn the power of your influence. You had to learn that with your power presented to you does truly come great responsibility. The only way you would have learned how to do the right thing even when fear tries to tell you to stop when other people's decisions have said things have just been this way for this long, so that means that's correct. You going through everything you've had to teach yourself has made you the superhero of your own life. Think about Spider-Man. Yes, yes, Spider-Man. Nobody taught him how to be Spider-Man. This, this, this gift was given to him. He was picked for it for some reason. In the cosmos, that one spider, etc., it knew to go to him for some reason. Because, like a magnet, the responsibility, the power that needed to be transferred to create a hybrid mind, to create the ability to fill more into this world, the dots, the cups, 
the expressions. You had to go through your superhero story, your trial runs, jumping from building to building, not knowing if you're going to fall, learning how to swing and, and, and spread your, your positivity, your web to the world. I'm getting a humongous download about that Spider-Man channel. You do not need to further explain yourself. When it comes to, you can, you don't, okay, I see I'm the other person, the new opportunities. You have no longer, this person's feeling, they no longer need a further explanation to you, to themselves or anybody about why you will always have this spot in their heart and why the little amount of conversation or influence, etc. you've had has impacted their life beyond light times. There was something else in their life that was a relationship that wasn't successful anymore. Does not mean they weren't successful together. It simply means that their story had hit the mark. They exercised great caution and patience to not do anything wrong to mess up and things in that relationship, that dynamic still, it looks like one person doing the effort. I see one person, just a physical representation, one person going to the gym, running, etc., and another one sitting behind, not doing anything. Somebody running a marathon and the other person has decided to almost bring like a chair and just sit there and, and gradually, gradually scoot it. And your person's looking back, running, waiting for their teammate to pass on the baton, like one, of, like like in track and field. I'm seeing a track and field now, and somebody is. They're waiting. They're waiting for this person to bring them the baton so they can go forward. And they're like, "I can't even go unless you give me this." Something about this past year. In this past year, things changed and upgraded for moments, and then the maintenance was neglected. They really tried for the past year to give another shot to something is what I'm hearing. And they part of this until them giving up complete communication with you and other aspects of their life. They, they literally are at this state now where I am getting a new teammate. I, I can't wait for you any longer. Um, you are somebody that I learned with and learned how to even run with. But I'm tired of not going forward. They wonder. They wonder if you would say yes to them, which you would. They want you to know there's no... Like, th there is not um, a drug or alcohol or substance abuse, etc. problem. If that's something that you wondered about them or they wondered about you, etc. Neither of you. There is an energy of those monsters. I, 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 I sense two people that had a lot. Like, when you were younger and etc. You did. You did. You, you, like, we state. What, what does it say up there? You're not crazy. You're wild. You've lived a wild life. But it seems like two people that really got it out of their system and are done bringing in influences of, of that dynamic, of those types of people. I see two people that have the opportunity to find fun without the distraction. I sense two people who 
embrace the balance of not holding yourself to such high critical standards and, and give everybody else credit. I see two people who understand I have to have a balance give and take. I can be this person, have this quality, have this hobby, have this part of me that has nothing to do with you. Give me a second here. I know this one sounds a little like I'm connecting the, the eye. I'm connecting the eyes and the dots right now of the vision, the letters together, yada, yada. And what I see little by little becomes more clear is that you two are very similar, but also polar opposites. And there is a sense of maybe one person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I okay. can't. There's a sense of one person for a lot of you here, because these are collective tickets that resonates. One person doesn't drink any alcohol. Another person does, but it's very um, under control and they can have fun, but they know when to cut themselves off. I could not stop channeling that. So either you are the person that doesn't drink alcohol at all, or maybe you're the person that does, but knows your limits and the other person it doesn't drink alcohol and, and you wondered if there would be a hard ability to spend time together and enjoy things without the distraction i see no matter how this resonates for you uh, verification that they're not going to make you slip into an influence and you are not going to negatively influence them you guys got it out before you had to you guys had to get it out is what they're telling me before your energies would even align to actually being able to have a successful future and not collide but combine each other's worlds this person knows you're okay they know you're strong they wonder if you still think about them or would Desire to be in each other's lives? And the answer is completely yes. This new opportunity that lies in front of you is initiated by what? Work smart, not hard. You don't need to follow other people's rules. There is a dynamic of a work environment here. Some of you could have met at work. Some of you could frequent each other's works or work in the same field, etc. Spirit says this connection, it's all about doing things smarter, not harder. There does not need to be this big, explosive conversation to take you two to the next level. There does not need to be this hard, deep, intense energy. You can simply embrace being in front of each other. Telepathic connection, walkie-talkie connection is what you two have. You are in this situation when you allow yourself to just flow and not actually go above and beyond when you are simplistic that is the most comfort for this person they need you to know you don't have to follow anybody else's rules like what other people be like oh they haven't reached out to you well, we're going to let our egos just continue to fight each other and I'm not going to reach back out to you because it's a tally game. So many people get caught in the tally game of love is what I I call it. It's you did this, so now I do this. You did this, so now I do this. Th there, that's a, there's a difference between that and the ball being in somebody's court. If you've ever heard me say the representation of the balls in their court, the balls in your court, that's because of this. To distributing weight and balance to a situation. But when we do tally marks, 
all logic of balance is thrown out the door. Some ingredients in a recipe are going to call for one cup of sugar and one teaspoon or etc. of salt. If you were doing one cup of sugar and one cup of salt, whoa! You see the difference between balance and tally marks? You know how much of your life have you followed by your internal compass that worked out. Truly. How much of your life have you gone against the grain, not followed what other people told you to do, followed what spirit guided you to do, and it worked out for you, and you made things easier for others. People were able to learn from your experience. They want you to surrender to the fact that you've always been right about this connection. Things just take time. And you had to learn more about yourself. And they had to learn more about themselves. And there was things you had to let go. And there was things they had to let go. And guess what? Being in each other's lives made that happen. Being in each other's lives it's not scary. It's evolutionary. Think about being on us like a ship okay when, when they're going up that shit's i'm sure it's fucking intense they have to be ready they have to go into like you know sensory deprecation or gosh i am not an astronaut i don't work for nasa but i think you all obviously know what i'm trying to state they have to go through forms of training to be able to even handle the flights to space, like they have to go through, uh, there. It's like simulate, like space simulation and water, and handling G force. That's the word G force. That's what I kept trying to remember. The G force impacting them so they don't literally pass the freak out when they're on the way. They have to be prepared. So that takes probably being in those g-force tanks or etc those simulation areas and passing out a few times in them becoming overwhelmed dealing with the rage of taking control of your body and your emotions all within this this dynamic all of these these times together that you came and learned and separated etc those were your trial times that, that was learning how to be on the spaceship so you can take the energy to get up there like a motherfucking G. You guys are ready for more. And you are here to play, to, to play ball together. But it went from being on different opposite sides of the court, different teams. And playing together. There was a part that I feel is happening now where somehow you became it's like when that ball threw up instead of it going from you being on two totally different sides of a team it's like a soon, I'm seeing the ball thrown up like in a movie and when like the camera's just on it's just panning the, the ball up in the air and when it comes back down you both went from wearing two different colored jerseys to the same ones and are on the same team now. It's like a, you, you woke up. You woke up and saw the whole time we were on each other's team. But we were in practice. Okay. You know how when you're practicing in, in, in any team sports, etc. When you go to practices, you'll, you'll be, you'll split up. You will, you'll all be on the same team. You'll be in practice though. And to practice how it is to play against another team, your own teammates and you will split into two sections and have trial games or practice games, etc. together. But at the end of the day, you're actually still on the same team. You're helping each other. So that when you go to the real game against the real component, you know what to do and how to maneuver and work with each other 
etc. You know each other's weak spots so you can help each other make those your strongest spots. You were never on separate teams. You were practicing. As that ball was thrown up and goes down, you went, you teleported from a practice room to an actual game together. You understand you too do not see your life as a game, but this existence, the court, is a game of chess. And you have the skills and the abilities. Now. Now. To expand forward together. You have to be willing to practice on your own time. So that when you come to the team together, you guys can focus on the real oomph. Work smarter, not harder. It's time for the huddle. You see you, your guides, them, their guides are all chilling in the astral. And I sense there has been a conversation in your round table, if you will, that for the next stage, the next downloads, it's not that you two need each other, you align and are meant to experience this happiness together. It is time to again break the wall. Break the fear. So many people are on your side and theirs about this connection more than either of you realize it. So, go be your wild self because those are the people that change the world. Those are the people that don't only get what they want, bring in what they deserve. Now it's time to talk about the Cala. Now it's time to talk about the Colorado retreat, the adventure that I have. I'm hosting in August 11th through August 16th. I had a brain fart for a moment. August 11th through August 16th, I am hosting the Spiritual Colorado Adventure. This is so exciting. I have spiritual workshops in place every single one of the days. We're going to be traveling to three national parks, biking, doom bugging, so much more. Every single person that comes on the trip is going to receive a whole divination present from me. It's going to include all of the tools we're going to use in the mountains together to cleanse it involves also the prince, the first prince of my Oracle slash tarot decks being gifted to you. The decks and the the decks, the Oracle and the tarot will not be for sale for quite a bit of time. But the first prince I'm having ready by the Colorado trip to be presented into your hands and used before anybody else has ever even laid their eyes on them. This trip is as just much spiritual as it is physical, and it's a very physical trip. Any questions, comments, concerns, etc. that you have, do not hesitate to send me an email at contact at offprintment.com. The link to the adventure is on all my social media platforms all over my website. I highly suggest you go ahead and claim your spot now while there's still the early bird discounts available. That's $200 off the entire trip. Any questions? Again, do not hesitate to send me an email at contact at offprintmint.com. Lastly, but definitely not leastly, I like to talk about my apprenticeship and my Tarot Teachings Viva Patreon. So, I have two forms of mentorship programs. 
The first one is my overall everything I can possibly teach you. You want full access to what this brain has in store would be my spiritual divination apprenticeship program. It goes into far more than just tarot. Now, if you're interested in specifically uh, learning and receiving guidance from me about tarot and nothing else, over on my Patreon, I have this tier seven level that is my tarot coaching level. Every week, I present a privated playlist video to you alongside the other apprentices slash uh, uh, tarot teachies, tarot students, if you will, that it dives very far into the meanings of every card, spreads, how to interpret companion cards paired together, crystals, other divination tools to use paired with tarot, and so much more. Every single month, I host a group live stream, uh, live stream alongside the Patreons and the apprentices where we cleanse our cards together and bond. We share stories, experiences, guidance, etc. It's expansion beyond even just you and I. If you are interested in becoming one of my apprentices, there is a intershoot. There is an interview program that we would initiate together to see if our energies align to work together. For the Patreon, I do not have an interview process. You can simply join that as soon as you're called to. With the Patreon, as soon as you join, every single video I have up to date, you have access to going forth. You get to send messages to me via Patreon at any time, asking questions about cards, helping you interpret your spreads, and so much more. That is a very brief description of the divination and the, the, uh, the divination apprenticeship and the Patreon Tier 7 coaching. If you're interested in learning more, you can go to my website, go to my services tab, scroll all the way down, and you will see the apprenticeship information there. If you're interested then in scheduling your interview, you would send me a message via the website. If you're interested in just the Patreon, go to Patreon at Uncle Bronze and you can see the membership tab. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, the tier seven. You would go ahead, would make your exchange and I would message you right from there. Any questions, comments, concerns about the trip, the apprenticeship program, Patreon, etc., readings, do not hesitate to give me an email at contact at offprintmint.com. That is what I have for y'all today. And I will see you when I see you. Let's get it.